Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Go From The Beginning, this time we'll talk variables. Okay, we're inside of Visual Studio Code and we're looking at a piece of source code. So, variables, what's going on? Well, with variables we want to gain that clarity of what's going on in our code. If we look at the following code, it's not really clear. We see 3.14 multiplied by 5 multiplied by another 5. Now, if you remember your high school math, you might say, well, wait a minute, I recognize this, 3.14, this is something I know. I think this is pi, right? Okay. What about the other ones? 5 times 5. Okay, if I remember correctly, that should be radius. Right? So let's try to replace these values with the actual variables. So we do radius... Oh, helps if I can spell, and then do radius again. Now, what I'm looking at here is an algorithm. So what is it telling us? It's telling us also that we are mismatching float types uh, 64 and int. So what it's saying is you can't mix something that's of type float with a type int. Now, by us making this into a float64, uh, it will match, because this one is already a float64, so no, now there's no complaints. Let's run our code and see what happens. We see we get 78.50. Now, we've created two sets of variables, that's great. Uh, we can also move these variables out. We can place them here on the top. And that also works. Uh, one thing we can do when we have variables like this is that we can add a parenthesis to group variables. We take these variables like so. Now we have two variables and you saw that the formatter inside of VS Code uh, using the uh, Go extension is formatting our values nicely so they're easy to read. You see, this still works, right? And we nicely grouped it. We are typing var uh, just once. Now, what else can we do? Well, there's actually a different way that we can initialize our variables on. We don't have to place them as a var here. Because imagine that we have a function and we only want that function to use these variables. So what do we do? We can do it like this instead. So here, and now we're adding this colon. And this is equivalent to what we were doing with var and types and things. And now we're just taking that away and we can see that we have a very... Now it's still mad at us though because we're mismatching things. So in this uh, radius case we need a way to uh, either convert it into float or, or some other way make it happy. A way to do that is just to add a dot zero and, and everything is fine. Now you see that that works perfectly. But what happens if I actually take this initializing uh, syntax with a colon equals outside, what does it say then? Now it's actually mad at me because it's saying I expect to find a declaration. What it's saying is I expect you to do this, which I'm not. So these kind of statements are reserved for when you're within the function. When you're outside of the function, when you're not even inside of another function at all, you need to use the initial var syntax that we looked at. But on the other hand, using the var syntax, you can use that outside of a function and inside of the function. If you use this assignment way of doing things with a colon equals, you need to be inside of a function. So now we were taught about variables and yeah, how you can assign them and how you can use them to create clarity. Because we went from 3.14 times 5 times 5 to actually say, pi times radius pi times radius and suddenly you have clarity of what's going on in your code and you can say well this code checks out this is how i remember the formula from high school hopefully you thought this in a video was interesting so please subscribe um, we will go through some more uh, basic fundamental go in the next video see you then